put up early when we were about to start shooting and said he wanted to lose a couple of pounds. It looked fine. He said he wanted to lose a couple of pounds. And so stupid of me. You should never have told me that. And uh, so, Welcome to Legends Memories. Today, we bring you the latest from across the nation as we reveal the stories of those who have passed. Stay with us as we share their impactful lives and legacies. Before we start, show your support by subscribing and sharing this tribute. Your engagement helps us honor their memories. Let's begin. Alice Green was the voice that never faltered. Known for speaking with a loud, clear tone, her words carried weight wherever she went. On August 20th, 2024, that voice was silenced when Green, the founder of the Center for Law and Justice and a relentless civil rights advocate, died at St. Peter's Hospital. She was 84. Green's final hours came after a sudden cardiac arrest. She had been recovering from a bout of COVID-19 just days before. Her husband, Charles Tuhi, was by her side at the hospital but had briefly left to retrieve his hearing aid. By the time he returned, it was too late. Green's last words to him carried her signature wit and humor, promising him she wouldn't have to yell anymore for him to understand her. Green's story began in South Carolina where she was raised by parents who had escaped the Jim Crow South. Her great-grandmother had been born enslaved, and her family's history of struggle and resilience shaped her deeply. In her teenage years, Green confronted the bitter realities of racism head-on. Once fired for standing up against segregation, she became emboldened in her fight for justice. From her work as an educator in Albany to founding the Center for Law and Justice in 1985, Green's legacy stretched across decades. She earned three master's degrees and a doctorate, and wrote extensively on civil rights issues. Green's memoir, Outsider, was published in 2023, offering a window into her experience growing up black in the Adirondacks. A true champion for equality, Alice Green left a mark on the world, one that will echo through generations. Maria Brañas Marrera always said she wasn't just old, she was wise. Born in 1907 in San Francisco, just four years after the Wright brothers first took flight, Maria lived through more than a century of history. On August 19, 2024, she passed away peacefully in her sleep at a nursing home in Catalonia, Spain. She was 117 years old. Maria's life began in the U.S., but her family returned to Spain when she was only eight. They arrived in Barcelona during World War I, setting the stage for a life that would witness some of the most turbulent times in history. From the Spanish Civil War to World War II, Maria lived through it all with resilience and grace. Her secret to longevity, she said, was a life filled with order, tranquility, emotional stability, and positivity. In January 2023, Maria became the world's oldest living person after the death of 118-year-old French nun Sister André. Though she claimed good genetics played a role in her long life, Maria believed in staying connected to family and friends while avoiding toxic influences. She even survived a bout with COVID-19 in 2020, proving her enduring strength. Until her final days, Maria stayed sharp, communicating with thousands of followers through social media with help from her daughter. Her bio on X boldly stated that while she was old, she wasn't an idiot. As death approached, Maria expressed her peace with the end. She said she wanted to face it smiling and free. Phil Donahue was the man who redefined daytime television. On August 18, 2024, he passed away at his home surrounded by family. He was 88. Donahue's long illness had kept him out of the spotlight in recent years, but his legacy was firmly etched in the history of TV. Born in Cleveland in 1935, Donahue began his media journey in the late 1950s, working in radio and television. It wasn't until 1967 that he launched The Phil Donahue Show, which would change the face of daytime talk forever. At first, the show was a simple interview format, but in 1974, everything shifted. Donahue began involving the studio audience, letting them ask questions and share their thoughts. It was revolutionary for its time and set the stage for the interactive talk shows we know today. Donahue hosted more than 6,000 episodes over nearly three decades, interviewing legends like Nelson Mandela, Muhammad Ali, and Elton John. He was praised for his ability to tackle serious issues in a thoughtful way, particularly those that resonated with women. Oprah Winfrey once said that without Phil Donahue, there would be no Oprah Winfrey show. 
Donahue's influence went far beyond entertainment. Earlier this year, President Joe Biden awarded him the Medal of Freedom, the highest civilian honor in the U.S., recognizing his contributions to society and culture. Donahue is survived by his wife, actress Marlo Thomas, whom he married in 1980 and four children from his first marriage. He leaves behind a legacy of thoughtful conversation and the belief that daytime TV could be so much more than entertainment. Elizabeth Hoffman was the heart of the hit NBC drama Sisters. Known as B to Millions, she played the mother who brought her four daughters back together after tragedy struck their family. On August 21, 2023, Hoffman passed away at her home in Malibu at the age of 97. Her son Chris confirmed she died of natural causes. Born in Corvallis, Oregon, on February 8, 1926, Hoffman had a career that spanned decades. She captivated audiences as Eleanor Roosevelt in two Herman Wauk miniseries, The Winds of War and War and Remembrance, sharing the screen with Robert Mitchum. Her portrayal of the First Lady was praised for its depth and grace. Her film career was equally memorable. Hoffman played Meryl Streep's mother in The River Wild and portrayed Ruth, the elderly woman living near the volcano in Dante's Peak. She brought warmth and gravitas to every role making her unforgettable, even in smaller parts. On television, Hoffman's resume was extensive. From recurring roles on Little House on the Prairie Matlock and Stargate's G1 to guest appearances on shows like The A-Team and L.A. Law, she was a familiar face in homes across America. Hoffman's time on Sisters remains her most iconic role. Over six seasons, she became the emotional anchor of the show navigating loss and redemption, alongside her on-screen daughters played by Swoozy Kurtz, Cello, Ward Patricia Callumber, and Julianne Phillips. In her later years, Hoffman reflected on her career with humility and gratitude. She said she always strived for honesty in her performances, hoping to leave an impact on those who watched her. Hoffman is survived by her two sons and her grandchildren, who remember her as much more than just an actress, but as a loving and devoted mother and grandmother. Jerry Fuller knew how to capture desire in a song. The songwriter behind hits like Asterix Travelin' Man, Asterix and Asterix Young Girl, Asterix passed away on July 18, 2024 at his home in Los Angeles at the age of 85. Complications from lung cancer claimed the life of the man whose music became the soundtrack for the sexual revolution. Born in Fort Worth, Texas, on November 19, 1938, Fuller found early success as a songwriter after a brief stint as a crooner. His breakthrough came in 1961, when Ricky Nelson took his song Asterix Travelin' Man Asterix to the top of the charts. From that moment, Fuller became a sought-after name in the industry, blending romance and lust in his lyrics. Fuller's greatest success came in 1968, when he produced and wrote hits for Gary Puckett and The Union Gap, including Asterix Young Girl Asterix. Though it faced criticism in later years for its subject matter, the song remains one of the most recognizable hits of the era. Fuller's influence on pop music extended well beyond the 60s. He left behind a legacy of heartfelt melodies that spoke to both love and longing, capturing a moment in time that many still cherish today. Kyle Marissa Roth lived her life in the spotlight, sharing stories that resonated with hundreds of thousands of followers on TikTok. But on April 15, 2024, her vibrant life came to an unexpected end. She was just 36 years old. Her sister Lindsay took to Instagram to announce the devastating news, but at the time, the cause of her death remained a mystery. Months later, Marilyn's chief medical examiner revealed the truth behind Kyle's untimely death. She had suffered from cardiac arrhythmia caused by myocardial fibrosis. The scoring on her heart had led to an irregular heartbeat, and it was deemed a natural cause of death. The toxicology report showed she had tested positive for diphenhydramine and metragenine substances, often used for pain management, but there were no traces of alcohol in her system. Kyle's journey had been anything but easy. She was a colon cancer survivor who had bravely shared her struggles and victories with her 175,000 TikTok followers. In February, she posted a heartfelt message reflecting on the battles she had fought in her young life. Her candidness about her health challenges and celebrity commentary made her a beloved figure on social media. Her passing was a shock to those who had followed her story online. Though her life ended far too soon, her impact remains through the stories she shared and the community she built. 
Can one man truly redefine success across multiple fields while overcoming personal adversities and transforming the world? George Clooney's life story answers with an emphatic yes. Born on May 6, 1961 in Lexington, Kentucky, George Timothy Clooney began his journey far from the Hollywood limelight. The son of former anchorman Nick Clooney and beauty queen Nina Bruce, George grew up with an inherent charisma that seemed destined for the screen. However, his road to stardom was neither straight nor smooth. In his early years, Clooney faced significant challenges, including a bout with Bell's palsy that left half of his face temporarily paralyzed during high school. Instead of succumbing to the setback, he used humor and self-deprecation to cope a trait that would later endear him to audiences worldwide. This resilience was a prelude to the broader struggles he would face throughout his career. Clooney's acting career began modestly with roles in television series like The Facts of Life and Roseanne. It wasn't until his portrayal of D.R. Doug Ross on Ur from 1994 to 1999 that he gained widespread recognition. The role brought him two primetime Emmy nominations and established him as a major television star. His transition to film was marked by standout performances in From Dusk Till Dawn and Out of Sight, but it was the Ocean series starting with Ocean's Eleven in 2001 that solidified his status as a leading man. The heist comedy was a global hit, earning over $450 million and spawning two successful sequels. Beyond acting, Clooney carved a niche as a director and producer. His directorial debut, Confessions of a Dangerous Mind, 2002, showcased his talent behind the camera. He continued to impress with Good Night and Good Luck, 2005, which earned him an Academy Award nomination for Best Director and won him the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor for Syriana, 2005. His portrayal of a CIA agent in Syriana came with real-life consequences. An on-set accident resulted in a severe brain injury that led to prolonged recovery. Despite these health setbacks, Clooney's career flourished. His directorial efforts included critically acclaimed films such as The Ides of March 2011 and The Midnight Sky 2020. In 2012, he co-produced Argo, which won the Academy Award for Best Picture, underscoring his versatility and success in the industry. Clooney's contributions extend beyond film. As a prominent humanitarian, he has been a UN messenger of peace since 2008, advocating for issues like human rights and international conflict resolution. His activism and advocacy work reflect his commitment to making a difference in the world, a commitment matched only by his impressive filmography. In addition to his professional achievements, Clooney's personal life adds another layer to his remarkable story. He married human rights lawyer Amal Alamuddin in 2014, and the couple has become a power duo in both social and political circles. From his humble beginnings and personal trials, to his triumphant career and global impact, George Clooney's life embodies the spirit of perseverance and innovation. His journey is a testament to the power of resilience and the impact one person can have across the worlds of film activism and personal transformation.